what's up guys, it's Seth from Workbench and today we're going to take a look at creating cloth tearing effects in Cinema 4D. This week we're going to take a look at creating some cloth sims inside of X particles. There's definitely some things I learned along the way that I want to share. I apologize for the voice this week. Uh, I have caught my children's cold, and it sucks. So I will try to make this short so you don't have to listen to me too long. But let's get started. The idea here is that I want to create a cloth that gets sucked through this hole. So it took me a few times to figure out how best to deal with this. I'm going to take you through the basic steps. So to start off with, I created this tube. And then I took that, and I made it editable. Then I created a plane. I left that parametric. And then I went into X particles under dynamic objects, XP cloth effects, and I clicked create cloth. What that gives you is an emitter for the cloth, a gravity modifier, an XP constraint object, and an XP cloth modifier object. And then on top of that, I added this XP cloth surface, and I'll explain why in a minute. So I kept this plane pretty low poly. It's 40 by 40 and 400 centimeters by 400 centimeters. And that's why I have this cloth surface here. I'm going to use that to give myself a little more geometry and give myself some smoothing. And we're going to leave this parametric. So if at a later date I wanted it to have more resolution, I could do that. Then on this XP cloth deformer, you get this tag, and it's the cloth tag. Now there's some settings here to note. First of which, here is the emitter that's here. And if you click that that button that I showed you earlier here in dynamics under create cloth it automatically sets up the emitter for you conversely you could do it yourself but why so it creates an emitter and the emitter is set to shot one frame it does one particle per vertice but we're not going to make any changes to this we're just going to make changes to the cloth surface here I should say the cloth tag here so iterations. This one here controls how soft the cloth is. For example, if you have a larger number, let's say I'll do 10 for right now, and I play that back, you can see it doesn't really have enough flexibility. But if I set this to one, for example, it pulls it a lot more, and instantly you can see it like wrinkling and pulling and continuously moving. Then you have these three settings here, structure, shear, and bend. And I'm just dropping down my shear strength and my bend strength so that it folds up a little better. But let's say that I had this up a little higher. You see it resists the bending more. And these settings you want lower if you're trying to simulate something thinner. And then the other thing here is tearing. Tearing is cool because you can just essentially just draw a map and have it tear along those specific edges depending on how much stress it has in that particular area. So I can just turn on tearing right now at 1.1 and what will happen is the center portion of this will just tear out from the pressure of the gravity. Let's see, And then the rest of it will keep tearing as it keeps getting more pressure from the gravity. Really, a lot of this type of stuff is going to be trial and error. You're just going to have to play with the settings to give you essentially what you're looking for. You know, you could also bring this up higher. You can see it tears much later. You can enable cracking. Watch what this does. See how really quickly you can get a very interesting look without having to do much, much playing. Now, if I went back and I turned on my cloth surface, you definitely want to set this to 180 degrees so that you get the most bending and smoothness as you possibly can. I'll show you now. So remember what this looked like before and how nice and smooth those are now. Here, take a look. Turn that off. You see how low res of a simulation this is. Still kept it really fast. And then at the end, you end up with a nice, clean piece of cloth. And obviously you can turn up your resolution some or whatever. And you can see it still plays back really smoothly. And there's a couple settings here that we can discuss. Um, one of which, as I discovered, is broken, um, which I have a bug report in for. It might be fixed by the time you watch this. I'm not sure. Remove single polygon. That one works fine. This one will get rid of 
anything that's just a single polygon. And then you have this one, which is really nice because you can turn on the triangle edges. So it gives you a nice, really clean torn edge, you see? Unfortunately, this one, for some reason, when I tried to render out the sample, it got wonky. So I submitted a bug report. Now, of course, if you want anything like that to tell it where to break, the more I learn X-Particles, it seems to be the setup of choice for doing a lot of things. You essentially emit the particles into one group, and then you use a change group modifier to put them in another group, and that other group is what is affected. So for example, we can do that here. Go into the XP emitter and go to groups, and I'm just going to create a group. Uh, I'm going to make that group red. And I'm going to make these boxes. You can see there's our boxes. And I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to change this to green. I'm going to look for an XP change group. There's an XP change group. And now I'm going to use this to take the particles from here, stick them in here. And then at that point, the gravity will attack it. So I'm going to go into gravity. I'm going to tell it I want to only affect group this one here. I hit play right now, it doesn't do anything. So you have to modify this in order for it to work. So now I'm going to grab this XP change group modifier. I'm going to add some fall off. Now I'm in R20, which you could do the same thing with a fall off in R, R19 and R18. However, here you have some really interesting extra controls, obviously, because of the field system. Um, but for this example, I'm just going to use a spherical field. I'm just going to animate the sphere from one side to the other side. Now, if I hit play, here's what you get. So here's the basic. You can see we're switching particle groups from the red group to the green group, and then we're affecting the green group, which in turn is pulling the rest of the surface. Now, if you had, for example, this not parametric, you could actually do your own tear maps as well. So let's say you wanted it to tear down the middle here, you can make this your tear map using a vertex map. But when it's parametric like this, you can't do that. So I think that's it for this intro. I'm going to show you my more complicated example now. So to start off with, I took our logo and I rendered it out as a still with a light over here to give me this shadow. So I wanted the idea of a hard surface tearing like cloth. So I made a render. And then I started creating the cloth. So I did the same thing I did in the previous one. I went into X particles, dynamic objects, create cloth, which gave me a cloth with an emitter. And I set up two particle groups with an XP change group. And then I added turbulence, wind, and two box gravities. Let me show you how these things work. So I started by creating this map. And this is just an animated map. So I have one that's vertical and one that's horizontal. And I have them in a fusion layer so that I can reveal them. So in this fusion layer, I have my gradient, which is just a regular gradient with turbulence turned on so you get this crackly line. And then I animated a gradient. It starts down here with this all white, and then it animates to all black. So that's essentially my reveal. And then I created another one that has these cracks down the sides to create more cracking. You can see here, see I'm creating all these extra tears. And I did that with this one here. And I did the same setup. I'm only just adding it to the top of this one. So once I did that, I created this XP vertex map. And in here, I have it set to texture. I'm using this as my object. And I put the texture map in there. And what that gives me is this vertex map. You can see it starts off like this. It just animates on like that. You can see all my vertex cracks. I'm using it here as my tear map. But I'm also using it as my change group powerful thing about fields is you can use things for multiple things. So I'm using it here and I'm adding it into my freeze so that it essentially switches groups in that area. And that's why that piece of cloth tears there. And then like I did it in the other one, I have my turbulence only affecting this red group. Same for the wind, same for the gravity. They're all affecting particle group two. Now let me show you a couple settings for the cloth. Like I showed you before, I wanted it to feel thin and airy, almost like a flag. So I set it to one on my iterations. I have structure set to 100, strength set to 95, and bend set to 98. I'm not really messing with these too much. Under tearing, I have groups for my tear groups. And here is where that goes. And then I have tear strength set to one, stress breaks set to one. The higher this number is, the less likely it's to tear. So I keep it at a real low number. And then I have strength and structure pretty much where it's basically set to, one and one. And like I said, I have my source tear here. Now, I'm not using block tearing, but block tearing essentially gives you like a strip 
So if you're like tearing, it'll give you bigger chunks uh, stuck together pieces. I didn't want to do that for this, but that's certainly a really useful feature. And then the only other thing I did to this is that in the advanced tab, I did stick. And the reason I did that is I wanted it to kind of be stuck down here and to take time to peel away this while this was tearing. I wanted it to like not tear and like just lift off in one shot. I wanted it to tear and peel away. And all I did there was I have a vertex map in here and all it is is just a little, a couple little lines here. Essentially it would be um, sticky everywhere that it's red and loose in the middle so that when my tear happens, it's not stuck down to the, stuck down to the thing. And I kept that low basically at its default, which is one. And that's it. And then again, I have cloth surface on. I have it set to two. And I have this set to zero and 180. Now, originally, I had it set to hide polygons. But every time I rendered it out, this is what it looked like in the viewport. Sorry for the poor render quality, but you can see when I turned that on, for some reason, it blew out like this. You get the idea. The XP cloth system is really super powerful and there's a lot of cool features that they've added right into it that make it really easy to use. So I definitely recommend playing with it. That's about it for this week. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and definitely hit up the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev and we will see you next week. Bye.